Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Critchfield. Um, we miss you very, very much and can't wait to see you soon. So today I'm going to read you a story called Bees, Snails, and Peacock Tales. This is a story written by Betsy Franco and Steve Jenkins. It is an AR testable book. That test number is 125095. So this is Bees, Snails, and Peacock Tales. In the day and in the night, on the land and in flight, tucked in hollows of trees, in the tide pools and seas, you'll find patterns and shapes from the snakes to the bees. Study a beehive and you will see the mathematical genius of the bee the hexagons you'll find inside fit side by side by side by side. This math is passed mysteriously from worker bee to worker bee. Moths show their symmetry every spring, flitting at night on fragile wings. Notice the colors and stunning eyes perfectly matched on either side. Attracted to windows or candlelight, moths are kaleidoscope shapes in flight. Some spiders weave delicate tapestries that shine in the sunlight and sway in the breeze. They spin lacy lines, then go round and round. Their knowledge of shapes is truly profound. They sit in the center admiring their art and wait for those flies who aren't quite as smart. If you should meet a peacock pair, the male's the one with all the flair, the female, who is rather plain, is dazzled by his patterned train. She watches as he struts and preens, his fan a blaze of blues and greens. Look up in the sky and seasonally you'll notice it's filled with graceful V's. A knowledge of angles helps migrating birds to fly with less effort and also be heard. By forming a wedge, the swans and the geese slice through the air and travel in peace. When a foregaging ant leaves a scent on the ground, then the worker ants know where the food can be found. In a very straight line, they march home with the snack, knowing piece by small piece, they can carry it back. In careful formation, they travel along. Their deep sense of teamwork is inborn and strong. By moonlight, a mouse who is bounding around leaves delicate prints all over the ground. In a pattern of four that repeats and repeats, two tiny front paws, two bigger back feet. On the dirt or on the snow, the pattern you see makes the mouse part of nature's geometry. As he scurries about, nibbling acorns and seeds, and occasional insects, whatever he needs, till an owl takes flight to dine for the night. Then the mouse and his footprints head out of sight. On diamondback snakes and on copperhead snakes, you'll recognize diamond and triangle shapes. The snake rubs its nose on a branch or a rock, then takes off its skin like a knee-high sock. Off comes the old skin, and waiting below, repeating designs appear in a row. C 
sea stars have five arms or six arms or more with sensors called eye spots that help them explore. They grow back an arm if they get into scrapes for they take such great pride in their bright starry shapes. The animal known as the puffer fish does not want to be someone's gourmet dish. Whenever it senses there's something to fear, it puffs itself up till it's almost a sphere. The beautiful spirals on top shell snails are miniature castles with tiny details. The spirals go round, getting wider and wider till you get to the snail, the shell's insider. So there you have it. I think you'll agree that creatures on land, in the air, in the sea, make patterns and shapes quite naturally. All right, so again, this was bees, snails, and peacock tails, and that AR number was 125095. Hope to see you soon.